Hi guys, Ellie here. So I was just starting to film this video when I got this like really weird comment from the last video I posted. Somebody goes, get your thyroid checked. And at first I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? But I, I think that they're just calling me fat. <laughs> There's some really crazy people out there, man. Oh my goodness. I mean, I knew starting when I started this channel uh, to prepare myself that there would be all, all sorts of negative comments and all that crap because there's you know, those crazy people out there, whatever. Uh, I've actually gotten like way, way less than, than I was anticipating, which is kind of cool, I guess. I've by far gotten the most from my uh, Norse paganism video. I knew it was bad out there, but I did not realize how bad. It, it sort of gave me that opportunity, though, to to pick their brains a little bit, to, to pick some racist brain, and sort of, I just wanted to, like, understand the other side of that, of that argument a little bit better, and, and talking to, some of them were, <laughs> said some awful things, really, in my opinion, um, but some of them were able to, to express their opinions really well, and we sort of had a, a nice back and forth with, with some of those negative racist comments or commenters. Uh, anyway, that's a, a subject for another video. Uh, I will definitely share the other side of the argument that I don't agree with at all, but it's, uh, it's an interesting conversation to have anyway. We'll, we'll do it later in my next Norse Paganism video. Uh, but yeah, get your thyroid checked. People are crazy. Well, now that I brought it up, I guess, <laughs> Not that it matters at all, but I am on uh, medicine, you know, that, that makes me gain weight. And I would much rather be a few pounds overweight than, like, dead or in the hospital. So, it's certainly not going to stop me from making YouTube videos and, and showing y'all my pretty face. <laughs> uh, or keep me from doing a giveaway, which is really why I'm here. I don't know why I am blabbering on. Anyway, check it out, y'all. This is the Golden Tarot of Klimt. And I'm giving it away! <laughs> here we go. Uh, yeah, so just like um, I think the last few giveaways I've done, uh, stay tuned because I am actually going to do like a full review. I'm going to flip the camera down in a second, walk you guys through all the cards, show them all to you in all of their glory. But all you guys have to do to enter the giveaway is just leave a comment down below. I don't make you jump through any hoops, nothing crazy. Uh, but just remember that the comments are open to anybody if you guys want to leave a comment about the deck or... <laughs> my weight, you know, whatever. Um, just remember, if you don't actually want to be entered in the contest, but want to leave a comment, just say so in the comments. Um, otherwise, you'll automatically be entered. And just like the last few giveaways, too, I'm going to leave it up for about two weeks. So today is, I have no idea what day it is, Tuesday, February 7th, at the time that I am filming this. Uh, and I'm just, I'm going to count out two weeks from tomorrow, because I might not get video up tonight. Uh, so two weeks from tomorrow is Wednesday, February 15th. That will be uh, the last day to enter. So I just won't accept any more entries after that night. And the next day or a little bit later that week, I will announce the winner. And I am planning on using a random number generator again, just like the last few times, to randomly select a winner. So if you were planning on telling me how pretty I am, it's, it's not going to help your chances of winning. You know, it's always appreciated. Uh, and it certainly won't hurt either, you know. <laughs> And also, just like the last few, it is open to anyone, anywhere in the world. You do not have to be in the U.S. to enter. And, you know, it's also, it's a little late, but we'll do this sort of as like an in-bulk celebration tarot giveaway. Uh, and we're not quite at 4,000, but, but it's getting pretty close. The subscriber count is like blowing my mind. So we'll celebrate a nearly 4,000 subs with this giveaway also. Thank you so much, guys. I like, seriously, I love you guys. You're amazing. You're the best. I'm stopping. Okay, I think that about covers all the crap I wanted to say. Hang on a second, I'm gonna flip the camera down and we'll talk Golden Tarot of Klimt. Hey guys, okay, here we go. So basically everything you see in front of you here is what the, the winner of the giveaway will receive. Now this is a used deck. I've had it for quite a while. As you'll see in a second, it is edged. 
uh, and and broken in a bit. There's there's nothing uh, wrong with it. It's it's actually in really good shape. All the cards are present. I have the box for you guys. I have the extra cards it came with. Uh, I even still have the little white book, and I will even send you guys the bag that I kept the deck in while it was mine. So this is the box. This deck came out in about 2005. Uh, and while it is called, you know, the Golden Tarot of Klimt, uh, all the artwork is not like Klimt's original artwork. Everything is by a man named uh, Atana Amchev Atanasov. So sorry if I butchered his name. I'm sure I did. Uh, but what he did was he took uh, took inspiration from Klimt. Uh, as you can see from the front, like a lot of his really famous paintings were just sort of redone for this deck. And, and they're done in a beautiful way that is really true to uh, the look and the style and the spirit of, of Gustav Klimt, uh, who was a, what, early 20th century Austrian painter. Uh, he's part of that whole like symbolist uh, movement. He's he's uh, Art Nouveau, and uh, he's even got some cards uh, in the the Decadent Dream Tarot. One of my favorite, uh, my, one of my favorite tarot decks. Uh, he's got a couple uh, of his original paintings were included in that deck. And this being a Los Scarabeo deck, the little white book includes like five different languages. Uh, and it's all it's also on the on the fronts of the cards too the the card name in, in the different languages and such uh, but the little white book the first part is in English yep and it's a little history of Gustav Klimt a little bit about the deck uh, and then you jump right into it's basically just keywords for all of the cards uh, for upright and reversed uh, so you have your majors, and then all of your minors, and it's just a few pages. Oh, that's right, there actually really is this cool spread back here called the Circle of Faults and Virtues. Uh, there's a picture of it up here, right? Yeah, there it is. Uh, which is actually a really cool spread. It, it's really neat, though, they didn't just include another uh, Celtic cross in here. Good spread. Uh, but that's it. It's about what 14 pages uh, is the is the section in English uh, and real quick These are the two extra cards that you get uh, a title card and a list of Other tarot decks from Los Carabao, but that is what the backs of the cards look like too. Aren't they cool? They are completely reversible, which I absolutely adore uh, There's no gold on the back, but as you can see Thanks, Artie. Don't mind my bird. But as you can see on the on the title card here, you see those that glimmer on the image, like oh, the gold inlay on this deck is done really, really, really well. Can you see that? Oh, it's so pretty. I did I edge these? No, I didn't edge the two extra cards. But let me pull out the deck here, and I'll show you the black edging that I put on the cards. So basically what I'm going to do is talk a little bit more. I'm going to send you this, this whole little setup here too that I had. I like this little rubber band as a decoration because I thought it looked very like Art Nouveau. <laughs> Whatever, it worked. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to talk more about the deck uh, as I just go through uh, fairly quickly and show you guys the artwork on the cards. Uh, there's your back again, and this is the black edging that I did. Again, this was done a really long time ago. It's actually, it's in pretty good shape, but if you want to perfect it, it could definitely use a once over with a, a black Sharpie or a black marker again. Um, I did go ahead and just turn all the cards upright, but they are not in any specific order. Do you see that gold? I think the fact that it is like a low scarabeo with all the extra writing around it does sort of bother me a little bit. Uh, and I guess I should maybe just explain why I'm getting rid of it. I don't want you guys to think that there's anything wrong with this deck. It, it's an amazing, immaculate, beautiful, elegant deck. Uh, and it's certainly not like, oh, that was a good example. Hold your horses, Michelle. The, um, all the, the miners, get it in the light. There we go. It's actually very easy to read all the stuff that is in gold. Just my lighting's a little funny here. This is what, the five of wands. Uh, so for all the miners, there's a number at the top and it's just written in, what, six different languages, wands. And then for all the courts, there's no other symbol up here. It just says Knight of Wands in all the different languages. 
Uh, and then your majors. The title of the card is written in English up here, all the other languages, and there's just the, the number of the card in Roman numerals. So strength is 11 in this deck, making Justice 8 a classic numbering. So yeah, anyway, it is, it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. Um, lots of nudity, as you can tell, which you would expect from a Gustav Klimt deck, I suppose. Um, and it's certainly not like the, the imagery on the cards doesn't belong with that number, as far as I'm concerned. I think that they did an incredible job reimagining some of the imagery and reimagining even some of the archetypes for this deck. Uh, there is nothing that feels wrong to me. In fact, a lot of them are Rider Waite Smith based, and a lot of it is even based on like older tarot, uh, which you know me, like I, I freaking love that shit. Uh, for example, the Fool card has given people uh, like I said, they're not in order. We'll get to it when we get to it. Um, but the full card has given people a lot of pause, I think, when going to, when looking into this deck. Um, the fool isn't a happy-go-lucky jumping off a cliff dude. He's like this sad, face-in-his-hands sort of fool. <laughs> and, you know, actually, if you watch the, the recent video that I put out on the evolution of the fool card, you'll see exactly where that stance comes from, exactly where that where that feeling that, that the card evokes comes from. Uh, so yeah, in a lot of ways, this deck is really just right up my alley. Isn't that beautiful? Like, there isn't a single card in here that I don't enjoy. Uh, you guys know, though, if you read tarot, sometimes there's just a deck that you just have a hard time using, just don't connect with. And this was sort of a deck like that for me, so I just, I really want to pay it forward and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, give it to someone who will be able to really use it and, and work with it, and uh, it's kind of funny, actually, before I do any of my, my reviews, I always hop online and uh, check out, oops, that one's upside down, that's the tower. Um, I always hop online and just check out other people's reviews, whether they're blogs or, or video reviews, just to make sure I'm getting my information right and sort of see what's out there. But I came across uh, Benabel Wen's review of this deck. Um, I'll put a link to it below because it's a fantastic, fantastic review of this deck. Uh, and, and actually it made me sort of rethink if I wanted to get rid of it or not. Um, I knew it wasn't something I would really work with, but what she does with this deck, and I think she said her golden Botticelli deck or something too, what she does with them is she leaves them out like on a coffee table uh, with like a stone on top of it or something, you know, like in place of a, of a coffee table book. She leaves out like really ornate, elegant tarot decks for people to, to sift through when they're waiting or something. I was like, that's a brilliant idea. And this is like the perfect kind of deck to do something like that with because it is, it's super elegant. You know, it's almost a little Eric C. Dunnish in that it's it's really quite lavish and rich and, you know, all those. It's a little blingy. <laughs> it's a fancy tarot. Isn't that beautiful? That's the moon card. All those flecks of gold. All those moons have gold in it. I don't think my lighting is actually doing this deck justice. But yeah, it's, um, it's really pretty. And everything, as you can tell here, as you can see here, is, is fully illustrated. All the miners are illustrated. A few are a bit more Pip-esque, maybe, uh, but there's certainly something in each card to, to draw on uh, if, you, if you read uh, more visually, intuitively, or something. Look at that judgment card. Right. Mm. So as you can tell, if you are a fan of Gustav Klimt here, as I go through, you are probably recognizing some of these images. Uh, like I said, some are almost exact replicas of some of his famous paintings. Uh, a lot of it really does come from, it looks like, some of his like sketchbooks. Uh, it's almost like a what some of his sketchbooks would, would look like, or some of his sketches really would look like if they were finished works of art, you know? What, what they've done with each image is 
really created a finished Klimt looking painting. Uh, I love the pentacles are all like his cool uh, mosaic patterns and stuff in each one. Uh, but that's what they've done on each card. They've added this this gold inlay, you know, these these gold accents that you see everywhere. And they've also added what what he's really famous for, in my opinion, is a lot of this this mosaic, yeah, like that stuff. <laughs> you know, it's it's on every card. The entire deck is is super cohesive, um, and his style is just really very. I don't know. It's there's it, there's a funness about this deck, uh, with mixed with a, a very seriousness. You know, all of the people are are very pale. Some of them look very sad. Some of them don't look sad. Some of them look like they're having a grand old time. Uh, but it definitely has a, a very unique kind of a feel that runs through it. It's like stepping into another world. You know, two of wands. Look at that. You see all that gold? I think it's a really a very readable deck, especially for, for an art deck. You know? Does that look familiar? <laughs> I'm not familiar with the names of, of all his paintings and stuff, but I definitely recognize lots of them. The Kiss, I think, is the lover's card, of course. That's like the only one I know. <laughs> and that's the Sun card. Look at that. Uh, like I said, there is, oh, there's another really famous one, right? Zoom in a bit. All right. There is such a mysterious quality to a lot of these. Uh, and still just elegant. It really is. It's very elegant, it's sensual, beautiful. And the colors... Of course, I, I turn to a, a card that's that's more blue here, but for the most part, the the entirety of the deck feels very warm. Like there's lots and lots of reds and browns and oranges and and yellows. It makes for a cool contrast when they do sort of throw a cool color in there. They're like, look at that. It, it really works with with the gold, like the real gold, the gold inlay, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> That's your Ace of Cups. They are called, actually, Chalices in this deck. That's your Six of Chalices. And that's basically the only thing that's that's really different, actually. Whoa, check out Death. Uh, pretty much everything else is pretty standard. All the Majors have pretty standard names. That's your Devil. <laughs> I really like that guy. He's cool looking. Um, and then it's like Pentacles, Swords, and Wands. Uh, and all the uh, courts are, are standard also. I think it's knaves instead of pages, actually. Knaves. It's your ten of pentacles. Very uh, classic ten of pentacles depiction, too, right? Oh, there's your kiss card. There's the lovers. And that's your high priestess. She's really cool looking. With her book and all. I guess she's like looking into your soul. <laughs> uh, there is your Hermit card. He looks very similar to the Fool card in this deck, actually. Very similar. There's your Wheel of Fortune. Actually, it's just called the Wheel here, number 10. Queen of Wands. Now, I do also feel like there are a lot of, I don't know, little things in, in Klimt's artwork, really, that are, are references to to hermetic ideas and, and occult ideas. There's all these just interesting esoteric references throughout his artwork from what, from what I've seen and what I've read. Uh, and a lot of that does carry over into this. You know, it's nothing explicit. It's not like he's got... You know, symbols all over the place, or how chemical symbols and things like that. There's, there's none of that. Um, but uh, yeah, the subjects of of his art sometimes lead you there, and and you know, just little things. And it's, it's, I think, what makes his art really perfect for for a tarot deck. Also, 
I love what they chose to do the gold with, by the way. Like, this whole column over here is gold. Some of the accents on the, the mosaic patterning on his his dress are. Um, and then also they, just his crown up there. It really just, like, leaps off the card. Um, also, there are these little, I don't really know what they are, like these borders um, or little boxes. It's, like, on the top of the card and the bottom of the card. When you spread it out, you get a really cool effect going. That's actually that gold in my... Obviously, it's not real 24 karat gold, but then I wouldn't be getting rid of this deck. Just kidding. <laughs> Queen of chalices. But yeah, you know, like you saw on the magician card, like there's a, a snake and a, and a chalice, and you know, that's all original Klimt stuff. <laughs> It just, I think it lends itself to to being a tarot deck very, very well. Here is your Empress. I love that she's like wearing a, uh, what do you call it, like a helmet. Like she's almost like a warrior Empress. It's actually a really cool Empress. There's also a, a few cards that do uh, some gender swapping with what you're normally kind of used to, like the Magician who is female in this deck. Very cool. Here's your Eight of Swords. So, I mean, it's certainly not like you could use this deck with everybody. The nudity is a lot. Uh, we even have some lower half nudity with our full card. There it is. There's the one I was talking about. See how it sort of looks like uh, like an Alexandrian Otella blind kind of a fool with his head and his hands. Bit more of that that pauper beggar kind of fool like we talked about in our evolution of the fool card video <laughs> if you thought here is your four of wands which i love for the four of wands isn't that just a darling picture so serene and then yep it definitely is knaves knave of wands your knave of cups I, like, want these outfits. They look uber Egyptian sometimes, don't they? That's your Nine of Wands. Sorry, Nine of Swords. Classic Rider Waite Smithy looking, right? Uh, here's your Seven of Chalices, actually. This is another one of my favorite cards. It's like the gold on the dragon's eyes is just stunning. You see that? It's like a, like a Chinese looking dragon up there. That one I would have framed on my wall. It's a beautiful image. Is that seriously? Yeah, that's the card that stalked me this past year. <laughs> the Seven of Cups. <laughs> There's your hanged man. Oh, I'm gonna kill a bird. We're having parrot for dinner. Party. Here's your chariot. Oh, another really good one. Your Ace of Pentacles. Right, super Egyptian looking that one is. And I think this is the last card. Yeah, that's where we started. That is your Queen of Pentacles. Looking so stoic. <laughs> I like her. Back to where we started. There's your Five of Wands. So, yeah, it is a standard Low Scarabeo deck in quality and in size. The cards shuffle very well. They're a little bit on the thinner side, just being a low Scarabeo deck, nothing crazy. It is really a, a good quality uh, and standard tarot size, like all low Scarabeo decks. And if you win, like I said, just leave a comment below. You'll be entered to win and you would receive the little satin bag, a little rubber band, the little white book, the extra cards, the box, the whole thing. Uh, and I'll cover the shipping to wherever the winner lives. All right, that'll do it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Good luck in the giveaway, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.